we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright here. I got Deedums and Pookie with me today. Got my work partners. There they go. Well, I guess they're camera shot it out. Blame them. Who wants to be seen with me? Um, in case you hadn't saw or you haven't seen, we uh, actually went ahead and the house is officially on the market. Uh, that's not what this video is about, uh, but the other video was so underwhelmingly watched, um, it might not have been noticed. And the only reason it's important is we are now one step closer to our dream our, our really our lifelong dream of actually getting uh, to the mountains and uh, so that was an exciting step to get that sign in the ground and actually stake it out and say hey it's for real we're, we're selling um, so that's done and then um, I also another exciting development I got my first post COVID lockdown haircut um, it was really nice to go get that done to get rid of some of that hippie hair uh, that I had uh, but actually the real reason of this video today is to uh, share with you a project that I've been thinking about for a really, really, really long time. And uh, sorry, I thought Didi was chewing on a rock. For some reason the dog likes to chew on a rock. Um, it's a project I've been thinking about for a really, really long time. And uh, I'm going to share that with you today. It's uh, this table. Um, and I know it might seem silly, but you know, in, uh, this table here, uh, um, I had been thinking about something to do to cover this fire pit or something to do with this fire pit because most of the time it's just a pit and not a fire right in it and this is this is Florida but I think this is true for most places that um, fire pits are not used uh, obviously day in and day out and in this particular case where it's in the sitting area uh, it's really kind of awkward as far as not having a table here so uh, again this is just something I had thought about for a long time and so finally um, when I was in Lowe's getting material to build my fence I noticed the stock they had there and uh, I decided to uh, it just motivated me to go ahead and get this project started so let me go through it real quick because there's some really unique things I did on this project that I have not done before uh, in, in total and I want to share those with you the first thing was is um, um, I let's talk about what inspired me to do this, which was uh, this Western, or I think it's Western red cedar. If not, it's just red cedar. I'm not sure where it came from. They don't get that descriptive at Lowe's, but uh, yeah, you know, um, to build a table like this, you really had I had I had three choices as far as I was concerned at the time. Uh, the first choice was uh, pressure treated, right? And uh, you know, just not a great application for a table especially where food might be set on it. And uh, so I just decided, you know, for whatever reason not to, or for that reason specifically, not to use pressure treated. So my next option was I could have used unpressure treated pine, you know, the same wood, but it doesn't go through the treatment. Now the challenge there is, is that most of this wood is really, it's grown super, super fast and it's pretty young. And uh, what that means is it's not very stable dimensionally, even though they'll kill and dry it and they'll get it down, it's going to twist a lot, it's going to warp, and uh, you know, in a few years it's just not going to look, it, the table might even pop apart. I mean, all the screws might pop out, nails or whatever your bindings are, or your glue even, right? So regular pine was out as well. In fact, if you look in this picture here where you see in my workbench, um, the, that level shows and clearly demonstrates this workbench was absolutely flat when I glued it up. Now, it was never really meant to be an outdoor uh, table. It was going to be a desk, but I abandoned that project, and so I decided to use it for this work table. But you can see that thing is just, I mean, that thing is terrible shape. Well, there are things I could have done to mitigate that, uh, but since it's going to be indoor, we won't go into all that. So, pressure treat is out, pine's out. What was the real 
deluxe choice could have been teak like you see over here on our uh, outdoor dining room table this table is probably 12 maybe 13 years old i'm not sure exactly we've had it a long time i've done everything to it i've stained it i have oiled it i have pressure washed it multiple times and i'm going to tell you it just looks better and better every time right now the wood has just one of the most interesting characteristics in it after its recent last pressure washing and uh, teak is always a great choice but teak is a expensive and b not easy to get um, at least to the typical you know um, wood buyer and in this case i wasn't going to go out and seek out some specialty wood uh, from you know from a from a wood supplier so especially the quantity I want it and the thickness and type I want it so how did I get inspired at Lowe's to find the two inch cedar well they had this and then you know cedar is also an awesome choice for outside um, especially uh, when I was able to find it in two inch by eight inch by eight foot planks I started thinking man I could really build a really nice thick tabletop because you know the thickness of the lumber does give it extra stability and dim dimensional stability um, and so as you can see by the results, I think it turned out to be pretty nice. Uh, so it's 90% this. I did use some pressure treated, as you'll see, in the under frame. And uh, that is because, you know, again, that, that's not gonna be touched by people uh, as often. It's not gonna have food on it. And in that application where it might retain some water between the joint of the, of the top and the, uh, the stone here, or actually this concrete, um, it, you know so good good choice for there and I think it'll be I think it'll be reasonably dimensionally stable down there for for a while uh, so the only other like I said big thing that I did out of this um, well there are a couple things that uh, I went through is I did use uh, mostly handsaw uh, only handsaw is actually initially to cut it um, full disclosure I did end up having to go back and retrim using my compound miter saw um, because uh, you know, I was pressed for time a little bit, and when I originally cut my angles here, these 22 and a half degree angles, um, I used the, I used a different board every time, and it ended up amplifying any errors in the angles as I did it. So um, by the time I actually went to put it together, it didn't actually form a very good octagon. So I have to admit I cheated a little bit, um, but it's a lesson learned is that make sure your cuts are right and precise when you do it um, on that angle because if it's off by half a degree every time, then by the time you get all the way around to the other end, you are way out, eight, eight times half degree or, I, yeah, I'd have to do the math real quick, but something like that. So you really amplify those errors. So make sure, one, you know how to use this properly. Um, and that was the last part that I want to cover real quick is uh, this is a speed square I show you how to use it um, and at the end of this video I'm going to put a corrected um, reading it wasn't that I used it incorrectly but the way I use it could be misleading um, um, to to using it for all angles because uh, 22 and a half degree actually happens to be a special angle when using uh, a speed square so it makes a little bit of difference but anyways uh, enough talking, enough rambling. I just wanted to kind of introduce, introduce this video to you, uh, get you started on it, and hopefully, like I said, it's a project that you will enjoy and be inspired maybe to try and do because it truthfully can be done with a good set of hand tools. And with that, um, let me know what you think in the comments at the end. Okay, so how am I going to put this together? Well, I got, uh, I put together um, some little pieces here that we can use to kind of mock up what the idea is. Um, so essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a series of small angular pieces or pieces that have angles. Uh, this is a 22 and a half degree bevel uh, on the end here. And um, we'll, we'll miter these together to form a ring that will go and sit on the outer edge of the fire pit. And so um, this ring will basically first, I'll have to cut each and every one of these joints and then I'm going to take a, uh, a bracket this isn't obviously the bracket but I have some some stainless steel uh, brackets that I purchase and again why stainless because um, just durability doesn't rust um, or rust easily over time this can be something that can be outside in the weather so we're gonna when we're building this you know for something that we hope lasts for years and years and years to use um, so we'll take the brackets and that's what we'll miter. I could have used something like a pocket screw, but since we're only using one inch uh, material 
and going in at such a steep angle and I don't really necessarily like screwing into end grain as much as I do across the grain, uh, I didn't feel that was as good an option. So we're going to take the metal brackets and those will hold our miters. And then once those metal brackets and everything are on, we're going to cut our boards to length, uh, which will be cutting each one in half at first, 48 inches, and then those will be lined up like this, a little bit of overhang. And then we will find the center point of, of the, uh, of the uh, table. We'll place a, a, a screw and then we'll take a string and we'll draw a circle all the way around. And then we'll take our handsaw and we'll cut the whole circle so, as, so that, uh, again, it will slightly overhang. Um, these boards, of course, will be screwed into this, um, this uh, uh, understructure. And then with that, we should be able to, if I need to, I can always run some lateral supports underneath like this to add more stability. Um, that would just simply go across all the boards or as much of the boards as I could. And my concern was here at the ends, I might not get a lot. That's why I'm not just gonna run them like this. I, I would have barely any wood holding it if I don't do it this way. And it could easily, um, just somebody sitting on the edge could break the board off or pop it out of the screw. So by doing this kind of understructure under the table, it will allow me to give maximum um, holding capacity uh, with the screws that will come up underneath and then hold all these boards in place using this first and then any lateral pieces secondary to uh, make it a very strong structure. So that's the plan. Uh, and to do that plan, the first thing we got to do is we've got to figure out on our 48 inch uh, round fire pit um, in here, if you imagine this would be the outer edge of the fire pit stone, I got to figure out not the angles, but the, the length within each of these so that I stay within the, the top surface of the um, of the fire pit rocks or uh, concrete blocks so um, that'll be my first thing is I got to figure out that measurement and then I'll just simply make a series of 22 and a half degree uh, miter cuts to uh, complete it pretty simple okay so to start our project we need to know um, how big of basically a wooden support circle we need to make and we determined we want to do it with eight pieces right that would give us the fewest number of cuts we want without having um, cutting these uh, corners too tightly so I need to make eight separate wedges and I need to know what the outside length of each wedge will be so that when it sits here it doesn't go too far either over the edge of the circle um, and to figure that out, well, we need to know what the circumference of the circle is. So the basic formula is 2 pi r, which means that we need to know what the radius is. So if we know that our, if our diameter is 44 inches, half of that is our radius, which is 22. So real simple basic math here is we, and we really wouldn't necessarily need to calculate it, but we're going to do it that way, is we would take... 2 times pi, which is 3.14, times 22 equals 138.16 inches. Okay, so that gives us the total circumference. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to make that up with the boards and we want to use eight boards, then we need to divide that number by eight. And that'll tell us what our outside diameter is. So each board should be cut 17 inches on the outside edge. So from tip to tip should be 17 inches as we go around the circle. So seven, eight, 17 inch boards on the outside will give us our figures. Yeah, pretty simple, right? Now, the hard part is we're gonna cut all these by hand.
right so you can see um, with some minor adjustments here or there uh, maybe cut the back of an end off or a corner off a little bit but um, fits pretty well I don't think I'm gonna mess with it too much because I'm gonna actually use a bracket to screw each piece together um, it'll be two um, stainless steel brackets that'll go across the uh, across the uh, gap to hold it together we're not gonna like I said use pocket screws going into the end uh, I think this will give it plenty of uh, uh, dimensional stability especially too once we start um, putting in our cedar planks across it and then uh, might run one or two stretchers um, across the uh, the width of the planks just to give it that much more dimensional stability so let's see if this design works and um, take it back over to the uh, cutting table let's get our cedar cut up should be eight feet each yep right at 96 inches so we'll just, since it's easier to go this direction I'll take this and 48 inches halfway take my speed square okay and now most of these ends are going to eventually get cut off so while we want to be accurate it doesn't have to be dead on um, it isn't you know I mean good craftsmanship Try and cut on the line. Try and go straight up and down. Okay, so there's the first piece. You can see that's pretty nice looking stuff. Pretty clean, not a lot of knots. Should make a nice tabletop, put a little sanding on it. It is a little rough. Probably get some splinters from that. Okay, I'm gonna lay that down there. Put the next piece up. This piece is a little bit greener, quite a bit heavier than the one I just cut. I think this is one that uh, was not sitting outside. It was sitting in the garage. So it probably didn't. It probably didn't uh, lose as much moisture as the others. And make our lines. Get our saw. Pull this stuff gets started. Generally a lot easier even than that pine on that pull stroke. Can't see the line, just blow the dust off. I'm trying to crack out like it did last time. knots uh, they're all pretty tight though again about 48 inches Got a straight line just cut before it and again last piece Come on. 
Again, a really nice good cross cut, brand new fresh cross cut saw. Goes through this pretty quickly. Okay, that should be enough. Let's get over here where we can show this a little bit better. All right, so step one is going to be screwing these brackets together. So I'll screw this all together, and then we'll lay these boards not on top of this. We'll move this framework. It'll probably be a little wiggly. And then we'll lay the boards down to get our right distance, and then we'll lay this frame back on top, screw it into the, uh, the wood, flip it back over, or we can even leave it there, but we'll trace out our circle, and then we'll begin to cut that. So whether we finish that today or not, I'm not sure at this point, but um, we'll give it a shot. So first thing is, we've got uh, these brackets. I, I, we should, uh, I tried to find some that were actually um, already a, a two-piece like this that would go all the way across, um, and, but uh, they were all one piece, so uh, it might work out a little bit better, but here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna put each one in a corner like this. And they actually have a, they have an upside and a downside. The upside actually has a little recess so that the screw will fit um, flush uh, with the surface of the, uh, of the bracket. So, uh, and it, of course has provided screws. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll get these down first. Um, really shouldn't require hopefully any pre-drilling. It's always a pain to keep switching back and forth between your, uh, your drill bits and your screw. So let's hope uh, we don't have to do any pre-drilling here. Let me get the first one started. Pretty soft wood, so. Well, I guess we should really tighten that bit up a little bit. It's in there quite, it's not in there quite straight. I don't know what's going on with me nowadays. There we go. All right, let's reset this. But it was really down in there tight. Okay, so we got that started. Make sure our outside edge is aligned. All right. We'll just go through and do each and every one.
Hi, I wanted to add a footnote to the end of this video because I'm afraid that my instructions during the video about using a speed square could have left some confusion on the proper use of the tool. In it, I show that I rotate off my pivot point to 22 and a half degrees and you'll see me mark it on this side. And while that is actually a 22 and a half degree angle from either point, it is technically not the way you normally mark it. Usually use the back side of the speed square. The reason it works in this case is, is that the sum of these two angles actually have to add up to 45 degrees. So for example, if I move this to a 35 degree angle, this is the 35 degree angle. This is a 10 degree angle. So what you have to understand is, is that in only the case of the 22 and a half degree angle, will this ever be correct to use the front side of the uh, speed square?